Hey guys, to pass the time until OX10C finally arrives, I decided to pass my time again with some DCPU programming. I came up with a project after I think I heard Notch or somebody mention that it would be a neat thing to use DCPUs in the game to control little robots that you could send, for example, to mine ores while you wait on the ship. So, some of you might have seen in one of my last videos, I demonstrated this little robot. It's controlled by an AVR microcontroller, and I thought I might control it with a DCPU com computer. So the DCPU will be running on this little laptop, and the laptop will be controlling the robot. I am not very good at building things, so to assemble, so to say, this robot, I simply put the laptop on top of the robot. The only thing holding it down is gravity, and well, this is just for connection. This is a USB cable going from the laptop to the robot, connected on this side, and on the robot there is a USB to serial con converter from FTDI, so even though this is a USB cable, what the computer sees is a simple RS-232 serial connection, so it's very easy to use. On the AVR of the robot, I put a very simple program, unlike in my last video, which was kind of complicated. That program simply listens for bytes coming in from the serial connection and executes commands accordingly. So it can go forward, backwards, and turn around. On the laptop, I have an Arc Linux running and I built my DCPU emulator on it. Let's start the emulator. I modified it so that when you write to a specific address in its memory, the emulator will read it and send a, an according byte over the serial connection to the robot. So that way I can very easily control this robot from the program. It accepts um, input from the arrow keys and the space bar. The arrow keys tell it to go forward, turn around on its own axis, go backwards or to wait for a little bit. So let's try going forward a bit, turning around. One turning equals to approximately 45 degrees, but it's not exact, especially with this setup. It's center of gravity is pretty bad and it wobbles around so the speeds and the turning rate can vary from time to time. Anyways, let's let it do something. Wait at the end so I can stop the program before it loops because when the program reaches the end it will continue from the be beginning again infinite number of times. So when I start it, the arrows light up and it does my bidding. Put the DCP robot on the ground to give it a little more space to move about. Let's try to make it follow a specific path. We can skip the info and it's ready for input. My goal is to make it move a little bit forward, then to the left quite a distance, then turn back and come back the way it came. Now uh, the thing is set up in a way that if I wanted to move that direction I have to press the backwards arrow key or down key. So let's move, let it move a little bit in that direction, turn to the right, so clockwise manner, then it should move uh, wait. Then it mo should move this direction relative to the robot quite a way. Then let's try to make it turn around and let it come back to us. And then it should wait. 
so I have an opportunity to turn off the program before it repeats the same thing. Let's see if it works. Well, it moves a lot slower than I expected and it doesn't move on, an, on a perfectly straight line. I blame the little robot, but at least it kind of did what I wanted it to do. I call it a success. Again, I have put the robot on the ground and I have entered a sort of random path into the program. And now I will put my cell phone onto the laptop and record from its perspective. Let's try this. Ready? Go! Remember in my last emulator video I showed a new feature, namely simulating radiation. I want to see what happens when we test that on the robot. So let's start the emulator again, skip the intro and let's enter a very simple program like forward once, turn left once, right once backward once and wait a little more. The radiation rate is relatively high so when we enable it it will probably destroy it quite quickly. It's running. Still not broken. Okay, now it's... Uh, Stop on one command. Let's try this again. I will not enter any forward or backwards commands, so it won't run off. Oh, it broke already. No. Well, it seems to not be sending the bytes anymore. Another test. Still working perfectly. Ooh. <laughs> This is what the screen on my main computer looks like now. This, um, the scrolling text stopped and it became all noisy like. 